Hello and welcome to another lesson on soundproofing. Today we're going to talk about something that many of you may encounter in your soundproofing journey, which is existing brick, plaster, or concrete walls, or possibly wanting to use a system where you soundproof and build something from scratch with those type of walls in mind. So in this video, we're going to talk about the benefits, some of the cons, and different ways that you should attempt to design and build your soundproof studio. studio using concrete, brick, or plaster. All right, before we jump in, I wanna let you know that I have a free resource with you that will help you tremendously on your soundproofing journey. This is my free soundproofing workshop. It is 40 minutes of in-depth teaching, giving you a design, taking you through the process of how I think through designing a soundproof studio, and you will leave with your own design for your own soundproof home studio. So to go to that, you can watch it right away at Soundproof Your Studio. Dot com. That is soundproofyourstudio.com. All right, let's jump into the lesson. All right, so I will start by saying that using concrete, brick, plaster, some combination of all three of those is a great resource for soundproofing walls. The reason being that these walls have tons of mass and they actually achieve really good sound isolation at lower frequencies. I also wanna say that the STC ratings that we're gonna be talking about in this video are really helpful for comparing one wall system to another, but they can be slightly misleading because STC does not take into account super low frequencies under that 250 Hertz range. So it's important to remember that in recording environments where we're using bass, kick drums, and lots of low frequencies, we wanna have a wall that is superior across the entire frequency spectrum, not just what's typically used in home construction, which is like trying to reduce voice and foot traffic and things like that. So with that said, keep that in mind because concrete and brick is gonna be great for those low frequencies. Another thing that is great with these concrete walls, you can increase the ability to isolate with a concrete brick or plastered wall, by creating two of them side by side, creating what I call a double wall system with an air gap in the middle, and then placing some glass fiber in the middle of that air cavity. That will be the best way to use this type of uh, construction method. Another thing to keep in mind is that if you are using concrete blocks, filling the concrete blocks with compacted sand or mortar will also increase the mass and thus increase the sound isolation you will get from your wall. So keep that in mind as we talk about this. And let's take a look now at some of the STC ratings of these different materials so you can see how they compare with each other. So this chart that you guys are looking at right now is from a great book, which I recommend reading only if you are a nerd like me and want to get into the nitty gritty. Uh, it's a great reference book and it's called The Master Handbook of Acoustics. I have the sixth edition. This is by F. Alton Everest and Ken C. Pullman. Now, if we look at this figure from their book, this is on page 337, we can see that in table 17-4, they talk about a brick wall with four and a half inch plaster uh, on both sides, and that gives you an SCC of 42. The brick wall with that is nine inches thick with plaster on both sides would give you an SCC of 52, which that is actually really good for uh, a recording studio. A double six inch concrete block wall spaced six inches apart would give you an SCC of 59, which I would say that is about as good as you can get uh, and is a great design if you're willing to give up all that space in your room with such massive walls. And then a single 12 inch concrete block wall would give you an STC of 51. And that again also is pretty good for just a single wall and not having to do a double wall system. I will say that there is a drawback with using concrete or mortar or brick walls. And that is that they can transmit impulse noise, meaning if something taps the wall or if there's a sound that goes through the wall, it will transmit very easily through the material itself, through the concrete, through the brick. So you wanna make sure that you decouple your walls. Using a single wall is not gonna be ideal. You probably still wanna use a double wall system of some kind, and we'll talk about that more in a second here. So now we're gonna look at a second chart from the Master Handbook of Acoustics book. And this is going to show you the difference between using a single concrete wall and a double concrete wall. And as you can see in this graph here, the 
single 12 inch concrete block wall has an SDC of 51. And then the two six inch concrete block walls spaced six inches apart will get you an STC of 59, which is a lot better. And you can see in the sound transmission loss that it's doing a lot better than the 12 inch single concrete block wall. Now, if we look at another diagram here that shows comparing different brick wall designs, you can see in this diagram here also from the Master Handbook of Acoustics book, um, this is figure 17-18. We can see that an eight inch brick wall uh, does the least amount of transmission loss. And then we can see that a brick wall with either wood framing in front of it with an air gap, resilient channels attached to the wall, or gypsum board uh, attached to the wall with some in insulation will actually give you a slightly better transmission loss. So just adding more mass to that wall. And then the best design is going to be the four inch brick wall and a four inch air gap and then putting glass fiber in the middle. And that will give you the greatest transmission loss out of those three designs. So I do have a student right now who is thinking of using a double brick wall design. And I think it's a great design if you wanna go that route. Brick will have its own sound quality in the room. Uh, it sometimes can be nice. I actually recorded in a recording studio with an old brick uh, live room and it sounded great. So there is some advantage to having sort of the stone reflectiveness of brick and it looks nice in your studio as well. So that's an option. Uh, or you could put gypsum board over top of the brick and increase the isolation even more. The last thing I want to talk about is probably what I would recommend for most of you if you're just starting in a basement or a garage or thinking of building a studio with concrete blocks or brick is to build the outside wall to your room with the concrete, the brick, or the plaster and then build the inside walls traditionally with a wood stud design leaving a one inch air gap from that thick, heavy concrete wall, and then putting two layers of 5 8 inch drywall with green glue in the middle on the inside wall. And this is the traditional way that I did in my studio of framing a inside wall with a one inch air gap. The added bonus is that you're still gonna have an STC rating upwards of probably 65 using this method. And you're also gonna get that added bonus of having the extra mass on your outside wall, which should help with reducing some of the low frequencies even more so than having a traditional wood wall for both walls. So keep that in mind as you are designing and building your studio. The more mass is always the better. So keep that as the main focus of your design. Brick, concrete, and plaster are great and use them as much as you can. And if you have a concrete basement already, then you're in luck because that's going to help you out with soundproofing even more. All right, I hope you have enjoyed this video and have got your, your mind spinning around some more ideas with your studio design. If you wanna take it a step further, please check out that soundproofing workshop at soundproofyourstudio.com. I guarantee you it will help you tremendously uh, and focus you more so than just watching endless YouTube videos and, and trying to do research on the internet. So again, go to soundproofyourstudio.com. You can watch it for free and I will see you all next Monday with more soundproofing advice.